electricity consumption in India. As per reports of the Planning Commission, the energy supply must grow at a rate between 6.5 to 7 percent per annum in order to meet the 9 percent GDP growth rate at the terminal year of the 12th five-year plan. This means that India would need to add about 76,000 megawatt capacity of power generation during the 12th five-year plan. In other words, at the rate of 15,000 megawatt addition per annum during this period. This is not an easy task. Hence, it is essential that demand management becomes a priority. Therefore, increased energy efficiency in the building sector and utilization of renewable energy are key strategies to continue this form of growing energy demand. To achieve sustainability, the policymakers at all levels need to address the environmental pressures due to increased demand for resources and a rapidly changing climate, which Dr. Farooq Abdullah has very elucidately described. Several policy and regulatory mechanisms have been devised to address the urban challenges and are being implemented through national plans and programs. The environmental clearance process is in place to ensure efficiency in resource use for the large projects. Energy Conservation Building Code is also applicable to air-conditioned commercial buildings with connected load more than 100 kilowatt and the solar buildings program for energy efficient buildings has been formulated for implementation by the designated state agencies and municipal bodies. However, much more needs to be done in this respect. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, a perceived notion of high costs of green buildings lack of clarity in the domain of application, deficiencies in the area of integration, and uniformity of various codes and standards, lack of disincentives for non-compliance, agencies and systems working in silos have added to the impediments in the implementation of sustainable habitats. Lack of awareness about the expected gains is also a major obstacle while ensuring large-scale implementation of sustainable habitats. It is heartening to know that Griho is addressing these issues and gaps to a large extent. It is imperative that in the light of looming challenges of water and electricity availability, states where a significant part of construction is yet to take place should ensure construction of sustainable habitats. All central ministries need to promote this in their respective sectors. Adoption of GRIHA by the Central Public Works Department and the National Building Construction Corporation Limited should give a fillip to both the public and private sector to construct environment-friendly buildings in a big way. The urban bodies must also make certain aspects compulsory while introducing a set of incentives and disincentives so that the developers fall in line and the bigger houses and complexes also follow this approach. I congratulate the Energy and Resource Institute, TEDI, and the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, Government of India, on the development and implementation 
of GRIHA, the indigenous green building rating system of India. I also congratulate all the recipients of the GRIHA awards for demonstrating environmental responsibilities, energy efficiency, and for making significant efforts to adopt renewable energy integration in their respective buildings. I hope others would emulate the benefit from the examples set through these buildings. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I extend my best wishes for the success of this conference and hope that the deliberations which will take place here promote creation of sustainable habitats all over the country, the Griha way. Thank you. Jai Hind.